Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our project Fighting Dengue Fever with Aerial Drones. My name is Marcus Folio and I'm with KTH. Our collaborators are Yashash Mahima and Kasun de Zoya from the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka, as well as Luca Motola and Timo Voigt from RICE. Uh, Yashash will join our session. Dengue fever is a mosquito-borne viral infection that can be observed in more than 100 countries. The same mosquito spreads also the Zika virus. 40% of the world's population live in risk areas. Each year, about 400 million dengue infections occur, resulting in more than 22,000 deaths. Uh, dengue fever causes significant economic and societal burdens. First, it is a major burden on public and private health facilities. Second, it impacts private households directly. In particular, families keep their children at home during outbreaks. Third, large outbreaks may even cause political instability. So currently, the measures are limited. Breeding sites are located by human visual inspection. Many breeding sites are missed. If successful, the egg-laying habitat is removed. The goal of our project is to detect breeding places with drones. A real-world system will capture aerial images from drones, generate visual maps with breeding sites, and cover large areas. So our system, uh, we envision a drone-based uh, real-world system that detects breeding sites, i.e. still standing water with mosquito larvae. In the first step, drones perform scanning flights at higher altitude. We detect areas that need closer inspection and mark those areas in maps. In the second step, we analyze water areas. We estimate water depth and critical larvae density. For that, we use uh, millimeter wave radios and multispectral image sensors. So first, uh, we discuss our progress for detecting water and uh, estimating water depth using millimeter wave radios. Uh, we use a Texas instrument uh, IWR millimeter wave sensor in a lab environment, as well as uh, mounted on a drone. In the initial lab experiment, we record receiver power levels for different materials, for example, water, plastic, soil, wood, glass, copper, and cardboard. Uh, the highest no, the highest received power level is observed for water. Copper is second. Um, the sensor on the drone has to handle the vibrations. Uh, therefore, uh, we use average measurements to reduce the impact of drone vibrations. In our experiments, we can uh, differentiate between water and ground. For our next step, we will look at the depth of the water. Note, if the water is deep, the risk for mosquitoes is low. Therefore, the water depth is helpful for reliable detection of breeding grounds. Our goal is to train binary classifiers to detect water depth of less than 15 centimeters. Now, uh, to better understand the recorded signals, uh, we look at the absorption spectrum of liquid water. Lower absorption is observed for visible and near-infrared wavelength. To improve our detection results, we also work with multispectral image sensors. And now I hand over to Yashash. Thank you, Professor Marcus. So first of all, let's see what is a multispectral image. Simply, it is a stack collection of multiple images of the same scene from different wavelength bands. Since it captures the same scene from multiple wavelength bands, it enables relatively high information about the scenario when compared to typical RGB images. So this is our multispectral camera, which is a Mikasen's Red Age MX and how it is integrated into the DJI Panther 4 drone. When talking about the spectral bands of our Mikasen sensor, it has five main uh, bands, namely blue, green, red, red edge, and near infrared or NIR as depicted in this table. Then we used uh, well-known methods for detecting water in satellite imagery known as multispectral indices, such as normalized difference water index or NDWI. 
it can be used to segment water and non water areas by thresholding the index which range from minus 1 to 1 here 1 means water 0 means ground and minus 1 means mostly the vegetation areas when talking about the results as depicts in this image the ndwi index is not able to identify the water retention areas on rooftops as you can see in the above histogram all the ndw values are below zero this may be due to the low water depth on the rooftop as well as originally the ndwi index was introduced to classify water water in environments with vegetation and soil so due to the low water detection accuracy of multispectral indices in urban areas we try to employ deep neural networks we have decided for a bounding box or an approximate region based approach because pixel accurate methods such as object segmentation are so complex hence we have uh, chosen a faster region based two step detection network it appears suitable to process multispectral images efficiently and it will be able to classify water and detect water retention areas accurately. <laughs> Here the basic architecture of our fast RCNN network is shown. Uh, first, the stacked images from all the bands will go through a feature selection or backbone network and it generates the feature maps. Then those feature maps will be forwarded to the fast RCNN model. Thereafter, the fast RCNN model classifies the water retention areas and the background as well as localizes the bounding boxes for the water retention areas. Specifically, here we enhance the initial RGB image space fast RCNN model to handle stacked multispectral images with multiple bands. Further, as backbone of feature selection networks, uh, this network supports uh, both ResNet50 and VGG networks. And for our experiment, uh, we use VGG network. We name this network as fast RCN and multispectral water detection. When considering the training process, we train our network using 112 multispectral stacked images covering peri-urban and urban areas in Sri Lanka. After 150 epochs, our model achieves a training loss of 0.575. Note uh, the backbone specification loss is around 0.379. So due to this, uh, in the future, we plan to decrease this uh, classification loss by gathering more data samples. For testing, uh, we use mean absolute pressure as our main evaluation metric. For an intersection of a union value of 0 0.25, we achieve a mean, ab mean absolute pressure value of 0 0.89. So here are some results from our testing set. Uh, they confirm that our deep learning model is able to detect water retention areas in both urban and peri-urban settings. However, we notice that due to the small size of our training data set, the detection with this model has relatively high number of false negatives. So as I mentioned previously, currently we are in the process of enhancing our data set to improve this detection accuracy. So next we estimate water depth from multispectral images. According to our preliminary literature review, we learned that mosquito larvae will only grow at water retention areas with approximately 1 cm to 1 meter. Hence, it is important to verify whether the detected water air retention areas can have larvae or not. For that, uh, we apply bathymetric log ratio algorithm as shown in here. The model assumes a linear relationship between water depth Z and log values of band reflectances R. For the experiment, we collect a dedicated image data set of buckets with varying water depths between 2 and 16 centimeters. The regression plot indicates a linear relationship between water depth and log ratios of near infrared and blue band reflectances. So, in future, we plan to introduce a large multispectral data set to detect water retention areas accurately. And apart from that, we intend to experiment with different backbone networks for our fast RCNN model and also assess other single shot object detection models such as YOL. Finally, we are also in the process of developing a classification model to classify water with and without mosquito larvae using multispectral images. So if you are successful in this research, we will reduce dengue fever infections and deaths in Sri Lanka and other countries. And this will be of special advantage for people with low income countries as well. 
In addition, we introduce new affordable technology, trained researchers and health personnel. So this is our research and thanks for listening.